We have a couple of questions and I think they're particularly good. I'm gonna share this very briefly. It was a personal exchange between Dr. Bartling and I this last week. And she was sharing with me about her busy day ahead. She was gonna be injecting 11 joints and doing three shockwave sessions. And I commended her for how much her patients and, and uh, clients must love her. And you can see what she wrote back to me, She's excited to do it that they were giving this older, aggressive, large dog, improved pain control that would last him a year or two based on the therapies he was gonna be getting that day. And she followed it up saying, yeah, it's gonna cost $5,000 today, the bill. So I said, wow, did they have pet health insurance? And she said, no. Um, Charlie's a super lucky dog. And um, I know there are many more stories like Charlie's We'll head right into Q&A and start with the financial piece, Dr. Hauser, because we did get a few questions uh, since we've been doing this series. Last week in particular, the discussion focused on intraarticular therapy. Some newer ones were discussed, some of these that have long periods of time that they act uh, and benefit the animals. What's the skinny on, on pet insurance companies covering for these types of treatments? You know, it depends on the company. And so my advice would be to have a pre-authorization submitted um, to make sure that you know what's covered and what's not. I just checked with Crum and Forster to find out about Synovitin, which is you know, a, a, one of the more expensive new options. Uh, it's actually radiation therapy. And I was told, yes, it is currently being covered. So I think you'd be surprised. Generally speaking, a lot of pet insurers Cover the things that are on the rehab vet sites um, that may not be reflective of some of the newer joint intraarticular injections. Last so week, check with your company. Sure. sure. Um, last week, we did learn about supplements that have evidence based uh, research behind them that have specific anti inflammatory effects, even. Um, what about supplements being covered? Again, it really depends. That runs the gamut across the companies. Um, there are, are a lot of them that as long as there is that um, guaranteed analysis by a third party, um, if there's evidence-based papers, a lot of times they will cover them. I do know that it is very dependent on the insurance company if they cover Chinese herbs or not. But again, a lot of those herbs don't tend to have those third-party assessments. Um, maybe they do now, but the last time I looked at claims, those were missing. So I would say that it's just worth a conversation with the pet insurance company. Remember, by the time you need these, if you don't have pet insurance, they won't be covered. You need to get your pet insurance early. Anything else to add, Drs. Bartling, Alvarez, or Fry, from your experiences? Just a thought. So... Uh, I think that what we're showing tonight is there's some pretty advanced care that we can do for dogs and cats with arthritis. And I think that potentially, traditionally, we might think about arthritis as being a dead end. It's a disease that everybody gets, and it's going to hurt forever, and there's just nothing you can do about it. So what I'd like to put forward today is to say, wow, look what we can do. And these are animals that truly come back to life in the hands of Dr. Alvarez and Dr. Fry, and, and I would say in my practice as well. This is a life-changing process. And so I would ask the question, so when we have family members, when we have children, the first thing we do is go get them pet insurance, and then, or rather human insurance. The first <laughs> thing that we do is go get our kids insurance. And then we hope we never need it when we pursue some of these advanced therapies for people, platelet-rich plasma, stem cells, acupuncture, chiropractic, many of them are not covered by human insurance at all. And so I would ask the question, if you want to get the very best out of what you can for treating pets with arthritis and knowing that these physical therapies and medicine are going to give you the best outcome and that they are potentially covered by some pet insurance companies, how do you want to go forward with that? Because this care for people is astronomically expensive as compared to what we pay even for our pets. 
And so I just want to put forward a thought about what kind of care you want to be able to provide for your pets. Fair enough. I would just add in that I am always surprised by how much the insurance companies cover for the care that I provide for my patients. And I just love, love, love um, that Dr. Hauser showed comparison between the ASPCA insurance and Trupanion. Um, there is actually on the AARV, that's the American Association of Rehab Veterinarians, a really nice layout of tons of insurance companies and what they cover. And um, thankfully, we have a lot more evidence coming out for the services that we offer. So for example, Synovitin OA has several papers behind it, and that's why the insurance companies will cover it. And similarly, uh, PRP has paper stem cells. So that they're really looking for, is this evidence-based? And if there is evidence for it, they typically will cover, which we, we don't see on the human side, um, just as Dr. Bartling was saying. So, you know, I, I completely agree. It's worth getting that insurance and, um, and, and get it as early as possible. It, it will definitely pay for itself. Absolutely.